our minutes have been gone from a generalized state to now we are naming individuals specifically. Before it was the general discussion was had, a consensus was taken, and now it appears as if the past several meetings we've had, it's been it's become a naming. This person said this, but we're not naming everything every single person said, only select parts. And I would like for us to uh, work on this a little bit. Part of the discussion went from we weren't really detailed enough to kind of be more detailed, but we had to have the meeting. Mm -hmm. When was there a discussion of it not being detailed enough? A couple of meetings ago. I don't recall myself. Um, with this, because we have parts where we have some, where we have public comment, item 4.1, where we have a detail, a slightly greater detail with naming, and then we also have another um, residence concerns that got a plea when there was much more, much more of the conversation towards it. I just put a short sentence in there, just so it was in there, just spoke on that. I didn't go into detail about anything. So, so in the case where um, so Joan came in and she read a, a, a letter um, and she's and the note says she supplied the letter. Is there any way that the letter would the letter get posted with the notes or, or no? Is that generally? Uh, not generally. If it's asked to be put on the record, it'll have to be put It was put on the record and it was also given out to the trustees as well. Right. So if it's put on the record, it should be attached with the notes. <coughs> Um, there's a part I would like to have with everybody else's consensus as well. It's discussing um, Michael Bloom's concern with my actions, which were personal in nature. Um, I would like it to read, as long as I have the consensus of everybody else. Michael Bloom expressed his concerns regarding a FOIA conducted on her personal residence. Would need a motion to amend the minutes. I'd like to make a motion to amend the minutes. Second. Okay. Well, trustee, if I may, if you could just state the amendment and where in the minutes. So it looks like you're looking at section 4.1. That is correct. Okay, so if you could just state the amendment and where it should be inserted as part of your motion. I would like to make a motion to amend uh, the minutes. I have four. Point one, public comments. I would like the board to read. Michael Bloom expressed his concerns regarding a FOIA conducted on his personal residence. Period. Is that an insertion or then are you deleting the rest of the uh, Sorry, yes, thank you. I would yes. like it to delete the remaining part from Focus disappointment in Trustee Simonselli's actions of this past week. Trustee Simonselli apologized for any hard feelings she may have caused that was not her intent. I would like for that to be admitted. Unless anybody else has any other suggestions as to how they think it should be worded. Second on the amendment. 
Srimati Amendment is against I could have it here, right? <coughs> Srimati Amendment is, I could not hear her. Public comment. Michael Bloom expressed his concern regarding the FOIA on his personal residence. <laughs> Spoke his disappointment in Trustee Simon Sully, the actions of the past week. Trustee Simon Sully apologized for any hard feeling she may have caused that was not her intent stricken. And then uh, on the next line of Joan, Joan Spillis expressed her concerns about the Rowling Park proposed transfer station and the study done by Shaw Environmental. She supplied the board with a letter she read and a letter copy of the letter to be attached to this. Phyllis, 650 South Kern Road. Uh, for those people who weren't here last week, I just want to encapsulate what my letter was about that was put, that will be put into the public record. I'm a nurse with a research background, and I brought up concerns that when you look at um, group hiring Shaw, who conducted the study that a lot of decisions are being made on or with, um, I had concerns about the methodology, certain aspects of the methodology that drew certain conclusions that a lot of decisions are being made on. So that's one point. The second point is other studies back this up. There have been a multitude of other studies done. You can readily Google them and find them. The BBC study is one of them conducted in Colorado. There are other studies in Colorado, Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey that disputes some findings of Shaw. And so this is what I wanted to bring up. So I asked the board last week if they could consider what I had said, and then I want to follow up and see if anything was done the last two weeks to look into a restudy or anything else that you found out. Thank you. Uh, just to clarify, you are referring to the life cycle analysis study that was done that we had concerns with. We have been trying to follow up and see who is capable of doing studies and options on what to look at in the future. Okay, thank you. Sir? My name is Alvin Law, 591 South Kensington Drive. Um, one of my concerns is, again, rehashing everything, our homes, the value is not only going down because of the economy, but when this group gets put in, it's going to take our home values and bring them down even more than what they are. 
And last week, uh, several of us received a email with a video on it. And in the video, it had the board talking about Groot and about some issues that they have to look at. One of them is our, is our Groundland community going to get a lawyer and let the community know what's going on. Because right now, again, it's been months since this has been a subject at all the meetings at Groot and here. And we still haven't received anything. Now, all I know is that if Round Lake or Round Lake Park was having a mall put in, believe me, there would be letters out, there would be all kinds of information out about having this great mall put in. But we haven't heard anything about the Groot and what Round Lake is doing to have this information for all of us. <coughs> so again, in seeing that video, it was talked about, you know, is the board going to vote for having this or not to have group do this? And then there was discussion about a lawyer. And of course, we can't afford a lawyer. So we're hoping that all of our uh, committee men here at the Round Lake will think about hiring a lawyer and at least let us know what's going on. Is this the time to speak our word on whether or not we want this done or the problems that we have? Or are we waiting to do that according to this? Because for what he said too, I believe that if we were given a chance and maybe a little bit more um, notice to get together, to form an opinion, to put something in writing, to come forth and give our opinion in writing, whatever you guys want, I think a lot more people would do that. I think notice, for instance, she didn't get notice on the phone about this meeting, I did. I think there's a lot of people that would have a problem with what's going on here with Groot, if they were more aware of it. I feel like it's slipping beneath our fingertips and all of a sudden it's gonna be voted on and we really don't know exactly what's going on yet and, or have we been given a pretty vocal chance to, to go against this. So maybe that is something that can be done first. Is there anything that you guys can do to get a more awareness out there for people to come forward and say no? And, and I know that this meeting is probably the place to do it but I just don't know if that was if that's the best way to do it, to we, get more people. We have been trying to find additional options to contact people. The CTY call is one way. We also have an email list that goes out with that so anybody that has signed up with that mm -hmm. gets the notice via email. And we have discussed options and things like that, uh, timing with getting notices out and giving it space on the water bills were issues of mm -hmm. how effective those parts could be that we have talked about that as well. We actually have a couple of different agenda items tonight. One is discussion on exemption to give to our Spalco representative for the upcoming meeting at Spalco. And that's it during this regular board meeting and then we have committee of the whole meeting following this board meeting that we have our discussion on these as well. Great. Thank you. Well, we plan on having more discussion on that. That's what I wanted to know. Thank you. What about the traffic? Just wanted to point out. Sandy O'Rourke. It's 255 West Blackthorn Court. Facing group. Really pretty deck. Yes, hi. I'd like to make a public comment here. My name is Donna Harbeck. I'm at 2517 West Autumn Drive. I'm in the Silver Leaf Glen subdivision, which is some way away from the proposed root site. But I am strongly opposed to a garbage transfer station in our community for a number of reasons. One is, as the gentleman said, our home values have gone down uh, tremendously. And all things equal, I can't see how a garbage transfer station in our community, where it's just a stone's throw from beautiful homes of Dunn Village, and Bright Meadows, I don't see how that could possibly be a good thing for our community, a good thing for the children, for the for the neighbors living in that area. We'll have trucks coming and going on Route 120. It's garbage. So they're going to say it's, it's a transfer station. Um, the garbage really isn't going to be there for a long time, but the garbage will be coming and going throughout the day. It can't be a good thing. Uh, pollution, noise, home values, I think already, unfortunately, 
our community might have uh, not the best reputation, unfortunately. And just to say that there's a garbage station that's going to be coming in can't be a good thing. I would also like to comment and thank the board, uh, the mayor in particular, for communications going out to uh, the residents. So I'm on the list. I've, I've got the phone calls from you. I did get a letter in the mail and um, uh, the email notification. So I think that's great um, because really what's happening here, this, the site isn't even going into Round Lake. It's going into our community. Um, I don't know to what extent any communication has gone out to the Round Lake Park residents or Round Lake Beach residents because our greater community is really effective. Um, I had brought this up at the meeting that you were nice enough to, to tell us about where we had the opportunity to talk with the group people and um, the pamphlets that they handed out very clearly said at the bottom not to be distributed because my plan was to just walk up and down the streets of Madrona Village and, and Bright Meadows and just let these people know this is going in your area here, but I didn't make the time to get the permission to copy that, so why that couldn't be copied is probably an issue um, because I don't know that the community at large is really aware of this and it's going to be snuck in, just like I found out that across the street from the proposed route transfer station, there will be, it's already been approved, a recycling center. So that's going in. I never knew about that. Probably not a good thing. I'm all for recycling, yes. Just not in my neighborhood, just not in our community. Um, the other thing that I think is uh, something that's important is to ensure that when notice goes out, um, and I don't know if we collectively work with our Round Lake community, so we work with the beach, we work with um, Round Lake Park, and make sure that the communications that go out are um, in Spanish as well, because we have a large Hispanic population here. Um, many of them may not be able to read English, and we just need to make sure that it's truly, um, you know, that we're truly giving notice, and people have, you know, the opportunity to voice their concerns. So thank you for making us aware of this. I am concerned because I just have the feeling that this is just going to go in and there probably isn't anything that we can do about it unless we get together and get some funds as a community to just bring an injunction against this and stop this. But when I went to the presentation and I saw this is already in place in Glenview and I'm looking at Round Lake, if the wealthy people in Glenview weren't able to stop it, I wonder what our chances are. So I am concerned. But thank you for letting us have the opportunity to speak. I'm opposed and I would hope that the, the board here would oppose that transfer station going in. I see it as bad news. Thank you. Don, yes. can I just um, interject for just a moment? Yes. It's not going to be a recycling station on the other side of that street. It's going to be a construction and demolition um, facility, which means that um, materials from old homes and buildings and farms and whatever <coughs> is going to be pulverized, crushed, and otherwise destroyed on premise and then re trucked out. So they can um, grind concrete, wood, whatever. So you, there's going to be even more noise and more upset. Oh. Yes, this isn't just recycling. Okay, because you know, that's not <laughs> recycling. This is totally different. Oh. That did begin right under the um, the radar, if you will. Oh, and that's yes. what led to finding out about the this uh, this other part of it, mm -hmm. which is the garbage station. That's very good to know because that wasn't made clear at that oh, meeting. No. And, you know, I, I would just wonder what the rules are surrounding notifying the community and if those rules are being followed. The construction and demolition recycling facility do not require public hearing. The garbage transfer station does require public hearing. Okay. Yeah. Just to make it clear to everybody, group has not filed application yet for the transfer station. We do think it's probably going to happen somewhere along the line. There are still a couple of things that mm -hmm. need to take place to, to set it up for them to be prepared to file. And they, they filed the application with Brown Lake Park, right? Correct. But they, do they... they need to file an intent to file the application first, and we haven't been notified that that has been done yet. Okay. And then other things that are part of the Lake County Solid Waste Agency requirements for filing are having host agreements with the host community, Swalco, and Lake County. Okay. So giving our Swalco representative direction tonight is part of that process preparing for discussion on the Swalco host. Okay. 
in addition to the small proposed agreement, I might also add that uh, Lake County is uh, actually having some meetings. The Public Works and Transportation Committee meets on April 3rd at 8.30 a.m., as well as uh, an administrative committee at 1 p.m. on the 3rd. Both meetings are at the county building on the 10th floor. And then there's also going to be a county board scheduled meeting on April 9th. And this topic will be at those meetings as well. I've just been informed today. Now, will that information be on the village website? Or how can I get that again? <laughs> Where do I write that? I'm not prepared. Um, if, if you want to just see me after the meeting, I'll show okay, you perfect, perfect. Yeah, perfect. And I'm, I'm ready the and willing to walk the streets late. with a pamphlet. The agenda should be on the Lake County okay. board website. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Try to do a link to those as well. Thank you. Sir? Ask and answer. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Dave Crisdala, 179 Round Lake Road. I'm oh, sorry, Wagner Road, Round Lake. I've uh, been here because of the, the group transfer proposal. I, you know, speaking for my neighbors and my family, which uh, there would be three of us here, but my dad is uh, Parkinson's. My mom's taking care of Parkinson's and all the time. So now I'm taking care of him now, otherwise it'd be too strong for the Bella family. I, I haven't heard of anybody that's seemed to think that this is a good idea. I kind of feel like, I mean, none of you would want me to say, it's like, here, let me throw my trash on your lawn and somebody would be there to pick it up in a, a day or a couple of days, and obviously I'm not going to do that, but that's kind of feels like, yeah, like, oh, we're just going to throw our trash over here, and um, in addition to the property value concerns that other people have raised, I have, uh, you know, public health, I mean, I don't put my trash out until the morning so the raccoon doesn't get it, you know, or so the mice don't come into the, the area and get it, and I feel that this kind of a, you have it there if it's not, you know, even if it's well maintained, that you know you might have an additional, you know, public health concern in addition to the uh, the concern over property values. I just um, I'm probably gonna have to leave before this meeting's over, so that also otherwise I was gonna wait, but I have to get back and um, help take care of my dad. But I, I just I just, if there's if we need to save money to do something like that, there has to be other ways than doing things that could lower property values by thousands or tens of thousands. My name is Dan McGillis. I'm at 356 Goodnow Boulevard. I'm a resident and I want you to hear how disappointed and offended I am with your robocall on Easter, Mr. Matt. I've attended meetings for months now and have never mentioned my candidacy. My questions have been only that of a concerned resident to hear the mayor's positions, recommendations, guidance about the group garbage transfer facility. <laughs> month after month, you have claimed to only be seeking and gathering information to make an educated and sound decision about whether transfer stations should be here. Just a short time ago, you finally made a, a, an assessment that Round Lake would not benefit from a garbage transfer station. I think we all here agree with that. Back in January, Trustee Trifon alluded that she would oppose the facility, and at that meeting, one of your political supporters chastised her publicly, saying that she made that statement only for political gain. Since Trustee Trifon and Newby are on the citizens' first slate, not your own, and that they had never been to a transfer station and could not possibly make a sound and educated decision at that time, I'll correct that person now. In December, when we first heard of this, we started our own research. I spoke with experts. I made an appointment and I personally toured a transfer station. I also learned how this particular company, unlike Root, would have contacted residents that would most likely be impacted by such a facility. This should have happened during the negotiations with the hosting community when they first started, not five years later. Two weeks ago, Mrs. Billups was here at a, at a meeting. She's a resident of Bradford Place, our retirement community that is in closest proximity to the transfer station. She attended that last board meeting and presented the findings of her research, which I noted and stated at that time exactly parallels my research. There's vast information available out there on the web from government sites, from the Carbondale site. The fact that our government agencies recognize transfer stations as noxious land use. 
Last week, I responded to Mrs. Paul, who happens to be here this evening. Mrs. Paul is a 73-year-old resident living in Treeview on Treeview Lane in Round Lake, very close to the site. She has a debilitating respiratory condition, and she expressed to me that if she is exposed to diesel exhaust for any extended amount of time from the, from the stream of trucks that will be going in and out of this facility, that she could be hospitalized, let alone what complications a noxious land use will present to her. We've all seen it on the news when there's some sort of noxious land spill, an accident, a train derailment or something, and the news reporter always ends his piece with saying, doctors recommend that infants and the elderly should not be exposed to this. And we're having one built next to our retirement communities. <clears throat> so I wonder, Mr. Mayor, what piece of information finally became available to you that you finally proclaimed not to favor a garbage transfer station? Was it the information that Mrs. Billis gave you? Information that I was able to find? Did you finally tour a transfer station as I did? Did you finally get the available information that describes noxious land use will devalue our properties? <clears throat> I did. Did you go door to door and talk to the residents of Bradford Place, Bright Meadows, Madroma, Treeview? Because I did. And making a decision was easy for me and the residents that I've spoken to. You have not given our community the support and direction. You have not been a leader to tour to guide our board. Month after month, and I believe, given your family relationship with Brown Lake Park, that you have been privy to this information for years. You have waffled and wavered month after month until now. Until now. One week and two days before Election Day. The last board meeting before Election Day. On Easter Sunday evening, when families are home winding down from their rejoiceful day, you make, a, you make a statement using the village property and their technology to make a robocall to our residents and finally proclaim that you oppose the group garbage transfer facility and that you would recommend the same for the board to do at Swalco. If that, at this late date, is not a statement for political gain, then I do not know what is. Mr. Mayor, I find this shameful and disturbing. Candidates can have different political views, opinions on how particular committees or boards, commissions, departments <coughs> should be managed and operated. And then those views become public, and voters make the decisions. And that's what makes America great. But this topic demands leadership, leadership you have not provided. Our community has been let down, and that's why one of the many reasons I am running for mayor of Round Lake. Thank you. to your accusation at the January Swalco meeting I spoke up on behalf of the village of Romney and asked Walter Willis what the intentions were when he had asked that he would had intended to ask the Swalco board to take a vote at the then scheduled March 28th meeting it was his intent to have the Swalco board vote on the host agreement for Swapco with the group facility. He stated that that was his intention. I also asked if he intended to give our village boards ample time to be able to discuss the subject and review the host agreement so that our village boards could give direction to our representatives on how to vote. I have been listening to our residents for many months since November when the topic was brought up, November 16th, that group had filed their intention to file the application for the transfer station. Since then, I have been talking and listening to residents to get their opinion, and I have been following the various research aspects and looking at the studies that were mentioned and provided to us. Uh, I have gone door to door talking to residents, and it's surprising the number of residents that are unaware or don't have an opinion or don't care. It seems like it's about one in ten that really know and, have, and care about it. That's kind of disappointing to me. At the March 4th meeting, I brought up that 
we should start with the closing the host agreement at the Spalco meeting. Our representative Sue Trippon said she would have a problem doing that because we're a member of Spalco and how would we look if we opposed Spalco at the meeting? We would look just like Round Lake Park. When Round Lake Park went and tried to do their own agreement with group without going through Swalco in the county. I was very disappointed to hear that. So since then, yes, I have been outspoken that we need to make a decision as a board and let our residents know what we intend to do for our residents and not play to Swalco on what Swalco expects of the village of Round Lake, but what our residents expect of our village board how to represent us at the Swalco meeting. And my intention, as I have been doing since December when I tried to set up the original informational meeting with group that Shaw had contacted and said that they were willing to do, is follow up, let our residents know that we're having meetings like tonight's meeting to get them involved and participate. And I'm glad to see the number of people that showed up this comments tonight. I appreciate that. Thank you. I'm going to say one more thing. I'm not just, but this is not for me because I might just be out of here in a couple more years and not live a couple more years, but I think health is a big issue with all the exhaust and the stuff coming in that if it's got asbestos, I don't know what kind of plans they have to make sure all these chemicals will not get outside the building when the stuff are coming back and forth and there's so many kids with illnesses now and they're getting worse and worse and a lot of them are blamed on chemicals and it's the thing that right there by um, the trailer court and these other areas that I'm not too familiar with. I live right in the tree house in the wood section and, and it's scary for health reasons that a lot of people don't turn up either. I don't even care about the house. It's worth as much as the health the kids and people growing up. I'd also like to rebut this for a moment, please. First of all, the information I gave on the SWALCO um, was the information about what SWALCO stands for, what SWALCO does, and the participation of villages typically within the SWALCO um, in inclusion. They were not my intention to ever intend or to tell that I was anything but opposed to the group. In fact, if I were anything but opposed to the group, myself and Don Newby, Trustee Don Newby, would not have been the two that brought the application to you, sir, so that you could say you and the board, or you and the administration and our clerk had never received the application, when we know it was received before then. And in fact, when Don Newby said, well, the, the board over at the Round Lake Park had already done the special use permit, when you immediately responded with, no, no, they didn't vote on that yet. Well, sir, if you didn't know anything about the group application or anything to do with the group, then how would you know that there was a vote to have had in Round Lake Park to begin with? So I would seriously say that the information that's going out to the people is being quite misled. Let me say again, on, on camera that I know is probably going to be blipped and used again for its little pieces, I've opposed group from day one. I outed day, from day one with trustee newbie because it was, it is, it's going to be, it's going to have detriment on our residents. And I don't think that that's fair to any of us. In addition to that, the uh, host agreement, if, if we'll go back in the minutes, and I don't know exactly what day you will. Um, trustee Clements, I, I think you recall this being said, I did say we should vote no to a host agreement. However, we do need to see if they can even meet the criteria before we say no to a host agreement. They might not even meet it and it would be moot. So again, I oppose group, I have opposed group from day one without any exception, regardless of how you choose to decide if you took the conversation or not. And in fact, we will have this conversation again before the minutes are accepted because I will not have those minutes set to document when you gave it an editorial that I didn't say. Yeah. Thank you. I'm Emily Mullins at 1039 South Hampton Drive. 
Um, I just think, uh, I've never been to this board meeting before, and to me, um, this has become a stage for political bickering yeah, at this point. Sure. And that's not what I came yeah, here to listen here. to. Um, it's too bad that this has come up during a campaign, right before a campaign, because that's what this has become. It's all about the campaign. It's not about the issue that we're here for, which is grouped. And I would urge, and I do appreciate the fact that you people who are in office have a really tough job and that you have to make decisions that are sometimes unpopular and that you are trying to weigh all of the pros and cons and trying to be fair and see what's going to work out. And I would say that sometimes you get caught in the details because you have to look at the details. You talk about the research, you weigh this, you want to be fair, you want to hear. But in getting too focused or engrossed in the details, it can happen that you miss the larger issue, which is what we're here for. The larger issue is, do we want our area to be known as the dumping ground for Lake County and all the other areas? And people who don't live close here, may not think that this is going to affect them. But when you're having between 75 and 125 garbage trucks coming in every day and 20 to 25 semis leaving, these are not just being dropped from the sky. They're going to be coming in from all over. And what's to say that because <coughs> this is a set up here in this area that we're not going to have more um, facilities, not to, maybe not just this kind, but similar kinds, we are going to be, we're setting a precedent to have more and more uh, this kind of thing here. We're, we're not uh, the most affluent place in Lake County, but we don't have to be the garbage dump of Lake County either. <laughs> outside, it's going to smell. I'm not going to be able to, 120 is backed up as it is now with cars. These things that are going on is just unbelievable to me. I've heard rumors about that this was first slipped in because they used an old map around Lake when Red Meadows wasn't even on the map. So I guess I'm wondering from you guys, are we going to be able to do anything today to help stop this? Is there anything you need from us? to say to you something in writing, what can we do to help get this done, or do we have a chance? I mean, you guys can be all opposed to it, but do we have a chance of even stopping this? Like I said earlier, we actually have two separate agenda items. The one on our regular board meeting that you're talking about is to give direction to our Spalco representative mm -hmm. at the Spalco meeting, and then in our committee of the whole, which follows our regular board meeting, is additional discussion on the group transfer station. So everybody who spoke here should so stay your, then? Your comments count okay. both places. Okay. And typically, as time allows, we do take comments during the discussion of the individual topics. 
Um, as happened tonight, in most cases, people prefer to make sure their comments are heard okay. to start, but they do apply to our later discussion as well. Great. So we're not done with the discussion <laughs> on what the village will do and how they will deal, do it. There will be a lot more discussion. Mr. Mayor. Tom Mueller, 284 Cranberry Court. Uh, too bad the gentleman had to leave and say we're talking about political bickering, but we're not. This is fact, truth, stuff that should have been brought out a long time ago. And if you are so against it, Mr. Mayor, when I go to the pizza place, which is in Raleigh Park, what is your re-election material doing in there? I also had a couple of emails from citizens today, Jennifer Nsadi. Um, just want to express her comments on negative aspects of having the transfer station in our neighborhood. And as ours, the I-V-A-I-D-I, -I -I, the first name is, I mean, uh, Jennifer is M-U-C-C-I-A. MTIs and uh, both these emails were uh, expressing their opposition to group group eco campus in Do you have an address? Um, the second one is ours is two sixty nine South Wild Spring. And the other one did not have an address. Uh, in that vein, Mr. President, I would like to read um, an excerpt from a, an email that I received as well from Mr. John Kimbell, like whose address I do not have with me. He'd like to ask why the a message was sent out via the official notification system for what is without a doubt a political communication cleverly disguised as public service, but clearly political. Again, we've been trying to notify residents we haven't had many show up and that we can get the attention to come to a meeting to voice their concerns. Because what caught me off on this was the fact that it was which made me start thinking that it was political as well. Can you speak up a little bit, Trustee? I apologize. So the thing that caught me off guard where I started to feel that this had a political issue with it as well was due to, it says, I have asked the village board to oppose this agreement at the Swapco meeting on April 11th. Um, to me, it's already stating your opinion on it versus saying we invite you to come and express your opinion, which would either motivate people who are for it to come in and fight you on it, or for those that are not as motivated as some here may just sit there and say, okay, he already opposes it, they don't need me either. So it, it became political to me when there was already an opinion formed on it. It could have been just simply stated to please come in and express your opinion. We will be taking a vote on this. But I had stated at the next board meeting that I thought it would be appropriate for our representatives to oppose that as well for me. And that is, that is fine, but it was just the fact that it was done through the global call, which where it became <coughs> all the way up that way. Everybody can have a, a piece of say, 
you know what, I think this is borderline here where I'm getting the feel where it feels political or where here, you know what, we really need to let them know about this too. And let them know that we're going to be discussing this issue as well. So can we please make sure that this is known about that too. tonight if you could make sure that your name and address and phone number are on the sign-in sheet so that we can get notifications out to you. That's an important step. Pat? Pat Blavel, 1932 West River Oaks, Strong Lake. Um, if you wanted to get more information out to the residents um, as far as this very important issue, couldn't you have done an additional piece of paper in our water bills? It might have cost a couple of cents more. But this way, all the residents would have known what was going on. Part of it was the timing of how to get the message in the bills before the meetings were held. But it's been going on since November. Right. Okay. Any other comments? So, just one. So, um, given Trustee Sarnsali's uh, recommendation about the uh, Taking a look at the robocalls and having a review of that. Uh, is that something that we can have added to a future committee of the whole meeting? Yes. I mean, it's a great tool. I think we should definitely be using it on uh, probably even more than we actually do. It uh, definitely is a great tool, especially if you go on. Like I recently learned, I was always getting those, wait, what call did you guys get? I didn't get it. And I finally went up, signed up for it. Wow, I get texts, I get email, and I get the phone call, which is where I see it. So I think it is fabulous. Let's use it, let's utilize it, but let's just not use it for expressing our, our opinions so that everybody else can come in here open-minded and express their own opinion. And then come on for Tita and Wesley for saying, is the robocall something that you have to sign up for? Because that hasn't been in a newsletter either. I mean, I've never gotten a call. If I wasn't coming to this meetings, I wouldn't even know anything about the group. Man. No phone calls, nothing. If I wasn't coming to the meetings, I wouldn't know anything about the group. The CTY is available to any resident who would like to be placed on it. All you need to do is go to the web page, and you can um, access your um, online or ship, if you will, on, online. Or you can call the village uh, office as well. Um, you can elect to have a phone call, or you can elect to have email or phone. And the website is, is it just like brownlake.gov or what? Or eroundlake.com. E eroundlake.com. E e I don't know why the E, but it's eroundlake.com. It's like the little internet signal. Eroundlake.com. Don't don't e available at the time is the E. Well, I'll just take it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Asking people to sign up for the email and CTY notification. I don't receive every water bill because I don't have water. I have water. Okay, but, but we have private communication. So it'd be good to also encourage your neighbors and friends in the community when you're out talking to them about things and let them know that they want to get notified about special events and things that are going on in our community, big issues that may be coming up. Just go on eronlake.com, call our village, one or the other, and sign up, get the notification. Like I said before, I was the biggest person who never got into this feeling out of the loop and just questioned it for multiple meetings as to why I don't get the notifications and I'm sitting right here. And so I finally went up and I did it and I uh, love it. You can also view the webpage at eronlake.com and you can see what things we have on the webpage as well that aren't going to come through perhaps as a CTY because they aren't. Um, you know, exceptionally important or they're more of a low key sort of thing. So please check out the web page as well. You can view all the financial information and uh, you can look at the 
budget, you can see, and you can see the minutes uh, from the previous meetings. So you can hear the audio, there's audio version as well. Yes, Mr. President, we have uh, Lance Barr uh, hosting their popcorn days April 19th and April 20th mm -hmm. at the intersections of Route 134 and Cedar Lake Road and <coughs> Route 134 and Fairfield Road from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Okay, item 7.1 is a motion to approve payment of $130.01 to Ranger. So moved. Second. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? Any questions? Okay, item 8.2 is a motion to approve payment Trustee Newby. Aye. Mr. President, I would like to make an omnibus motion uh, that includes item 7.2, approve the accounts payable in the amount of $166,447.42. Item 7.3, approve payroll for the period ending March 24th, 2013 in the amount of $116,126.00. Cents. Item 7.4, accept the February Treasurer's Report as presented. Item 8.1, adopt a resolution authorizing an intergovernmental agreement for utilization of the Lake County Computer Aided Dispatch System. And finally, item 9.1, adopt a resolution for Lakewood Terrace Reconstruction and Water Main Improvements under the Illinois Highway Patrol. Second. Okay. Omnibus motion by Clement, second by Trifon for item 7.2, 7.3, 7.4, 8.1, 8 and 9.1. Second. Any discussion on the line? Roll call. Trustee Trifon? Aye. Trustee Wazinski? Aye. Trustee Evans? Aye. Trustee Newby? Aye. Trustee Sandoval? Yes. Motion carried. Last item is item 13.1, action on Swassel host agreement for the transfer station direction for our <coughs> I uh, just want to give the board some information that I followed up on this last week. Uh, we were asked whether uh, the village of Painesville, what their current position is, and whether they would consider partnering with the village of Brown Lake. I uh, spoke to Linda Soto, the mayor of Painesville, on Thursday morning. Indicated that Haynesville's current position on the group transfer station, they plan on staying neutral at this point. They only have a couple of residents that are concerned, and that they feel that some of their previous concerns have been addressed um, either through discussion with Duke and Shaw or from uh, Swapper discussions. Uh, administrator Mark Huber has talked to Mike Ellis, the administrator of Gray's Lake who indicated that Gray's Lake has also taken a neutral position at this time. Um, well, she was not in their backyard. Spoke to Walter Willis at Swalco on Thursday afternoon. Uh, he indicated that he was going to forward the draft post agreement with Swalco on Friday morning, which he did. We forwarded that to the candidates and our board. Um, They had the draft agreement that uh, he will be asking the Swaffle Board to take action on at the April 11th meeting. Um, I asked Walter to refresh my memory on the timeline of actions 
by the Lake County Solid Waste Agency and plan and uh, discussions that were had. Uh, Swalco Lake County revised the Lake County Solid Waste Plan in 2009. This included the introduction of garbage transfer stations into the plan, the countywide plan. The county, county board at the time had detailed discussions and investigations into incinerators at the time and determined not to include incinerators in the countywide plan. Uh, 2010, Walter wasn't sure of the time frame in 2010, but Lake County had discussions with group on a host agreement. Uh, comments were made that Lake County currently receives $2.50 per ton tipping fee at the Lake County landfills. The county administrator was insisting that the transfer stations when the Lake County needed to be made, needed to make the county whole on the loss of the uh, tipping fees for the tonnage of garbage that would be diverted from Lake County landfills was estimated to be three to 400 tons per day. Uh, at the November 16th public meeting on the construction and demolition facility, the fact that group had filed their intent to file an application for the garbage transfer station was publicly disclosed by the Illinois EPA and Walter said he was not aware of that prior to that meeting. Um, the draft host agreement that was forwarded, uh, Walter said that Lake County's agreement and Squalco's are the same agreement. Uh, he indicated that Lake County would be taking action at their board meeting at their April 9th meeting. And uh, Squalco would be asking their board to take action at the April 11th meeting. Within the draft post agreement, each entity, Squabble and Lake County, will receive 45 cents per ton and the first 600 tons per day. And Walter indicated that Round Lake Park likely would receive $1.60 per ton. Uh, I asked Walter if their agreement included the requirement to negotiate post agreements with adjacent impacted communities such as Round Lake and Haynesville. He stated that it did not and no one had asked for that to be included at this time. Walter also offered that he had heard that group may be open to a side deal that would pay five cents per ton on any waste brought to the facility by haulers other than group and 10 cents per ton on waste that was hauled by group trucks. Um, we have not been contacted by group to negotiate any agreements to that, but Walter said that that's what he heard. He could not speak to Groot on the issue, but that was some great fun talk. Uh, 400 tons a day at five cents a ton, um, average of about 286 days per year of operation of the facility would be about $5,700 a year. <coughs> 750 tons a day at five cents a ton. The same period uh, would be a little under $11,000 a year. And if it was 10 cents per ton at $400, 400 tons per day, uh, a little over $11,000 and 750 tons per day at 10 cents a ton would be a little over $21,000. Landfills charge anywhere from the high 20s per ton for tipping fees to $50 per ton. Uh, depends on the contract and the volume of waste that is brought into landfill, how the contracts with individual haulers are negotiated by the landfill owners. Uh, Non-contractor haulers typically pay in the area of $45 to $48 per ton for the tipping fee charge. Uh, countryside landfill is an unincorporated Lake County. Ray's Lake as an impacted community currently receives approximately a million dollars a year uh, from the landfill facility as an impacted community. <coughs> I think they 
covered what uh, you were asked to try to follow up as much as I could.
any, if there is ways to, for them to circumvent us voting this down. We could be losing a chunk when they're just gonna walk around it and say, well, you said no, great, now that's more money for us and they're not even getting it, and which in turn comes back to us when we pay bills, pay some portions of those recycling pieces as well. That's just, I think that's what we're asking too. Are we sitting here for a reason or is this going to help at all? Who else needs to oppose it? Does just her, if Brown Lake opposes it, then they say, oh, well, people aren't happy. Haynesville's got to get involved. I mean, obviously, they don't know what's going on because clearly they drive on 120. So, Grays Lake drives on 120. It's already bad. So, either they don't know what's going on. I hardly believe they don't care. Mayor, you said that there were a lot of people that didn't care or didn't even know what was going on. I think half of that is the information wasn't out there. I guess I wish there was something we could have done earlier to get involved, for more of us to get involved. I realized that there were some other meetings before. I just didn't think it wasn't enough. But by us sitting here and spending our time doing this, is this even going to help at all? All right, I'll, I'll make an attempt to explain it, although I'm not the legal expert. But um, as our attorney indicated, one of the things they have to do, or mayor, I think, indicated, they have to file an intent to file, and they have to file. Once they filed that application, I believe uh, there was a hearing held, was it 90? 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, That hearing is the hearing that everyone in this room needs to be at. Okay. That is the hearing where we, as residents, have to present our own evidence, our own reasons why we don't think that there, this transfer station should be, should reside in Wellington Park. Um, the, the, the action we're talking about tonight is just pertaining to the Swelco uh, uh, part of post agreement. But the, the real hearing that everyone needs to be at is that hearing that is 90 to 120 days after they file their application. So they have that, there's no application. There is no application. And, and so we, we can make sure that everyone is notified when that happens. But that is, and there's evidence that we need, I mean, there's been some very good information brought forward. That's the same kind of information that we need to be brought forward at that hearing. It's a, it's a it's, if I understand correctly, it is like a courtroom hearing. There's an administrative hearing and an evidentiary hearing to put, put on witnesses and documentary evidence and this cross-examination. Right. It will appear very much like a, a trial. But the residents will only be notified of that intent to file if we sign up on the Round Lake website to have the notification? Or is a flyer going to go out or something in our water bill? How are we going to know when that application is filed? The residents within 250 feet will be notified by a group. Guess what? There's nobody within 250 feet. And we also need to know is, is the board here against it? And if they are, then do we have Michael as our attorney to fight this thing? Those are two two separate questions. Okay. Uh, I can't speak for the whole board. I can only speak for myself. I am opposed to it. Um, the, the question, uh, once we establish that we come to a consensus as to whether we're all opposed to it or not, uh, the question of what the action is is a separate question. Um, we still have to have, I think one of the things we would have to go back to the residents with is um, seeking input. Would you be willing to fund a lawsuit if that were the only option. But how do you do that within 90 days? I mean, you, you can't ask everybody to make that decision. I don't know if half the town isn't even informed of what's going on. I mean, I understand that, but was there any intention at all to possibly have somebody represent us to go there? I mean, we, you guys all know when it's going to be. I mean, was that ever an intention or is that just being brought up now? Like, I see that there's a lot of people here. Maybe we should get together and figure out if we can afford or spend money to do this if we have money in the budget to do it. If it's going to, and again, it's, if it's going to be, if it's going to help. Two weeks ago, we actually asked our um, attorney what his um, options might be for us. And we are looking at, looking at some more studies and getting some documentation. Documentation that we can actually use as evidentiary material at this hearing. 
And this is going to be necessary because from what we're hearing, just having someone stand up and say, I don't want my property values to fall is all well and good. Where's the evidence of such? Um, I don't want to smell the garbage. Where's the evidence of such? So we're looking into studies and, um, and those people who can testify that are professional in this matter so that our testimony that comes across carries some more weight. That discussion, I actually just brought up two weeks ago with our attorney. Because it also sounds like we're going to be the only town that's doing this. It's at Grays Lake, it's in the Angels, and no one's going to go but us. I mean, that could work for us, maybe? Well, yeah. we also, I think, have to engage Brown Lake Park, the residents of Brown Lake Park, and the only of them. Uh, they can, they have mm -hmm. to weigh in and try to influence their own trustees right, right here. here. Right here. here. <laughs> what is your, what is your opinion? <laughs> Let's put it this way. I live in Saddlebrook Farms. Yeah. I've got the waste dump east of me. Mm -hmm. I don't need another one west of me. <laughs> no, it's better <laughs> than this. My biggest question is, you know, we're talking about what if Haynesville and what if Grays Lake and Round Lake and Round Lake Beach. This place is going into Round Lake Park. What happens if Round Lake Park says, Yo, bring it out. I want the, the, the revenue from it. What difference is it going to make if anybody else around here says no? If Round Lake Park gets it, Round Lake Park is going to want it. They're going to get it, no matter what anybody else does around here, because it's going in the Round Lake Park. Right now, there's an opposition back in Black that is running in Round Lake Park who is opposing the group. So what you need to do is look up your candidates on both sides and see where they stand, and it could be stopped that way if they uh, uh, run like park. Well, oh, I, I understand. It. It's, it's all going to be a political yes. show, so to speak, of who's going to do what and who's going to want what. But, you know, once again, democracy is voting. Yes. That's the whole thing. I mean, we're talking about, you know, well, can we sidestep this? Can we sidestep this? Hey, if somebody says no, it's voted no. See a group, take a walk. Right. How are we going to find out exactly what they're hauling so you can come back to it on my issue with the health? Like, are they going to be hauling stuff with this asbestos and different things with poison chemicals? Like, which affect my brain, too, not just my lungs. It would be it affect other people too. in your household now. Any garbage at all. Groot had a thing a couple, a couple weeks ago that I went to. And it wasn't this, it was a very impromptu when you went around the different stations. And I came out, I personally asked him, what are you going to be on? He says, anything you throw in the garbage. I'm going, wait a minute. He says, no, anything that gets thrown in garbage is going to be in that, that site. That's what gets collected in the local packer trucks that pick up at the curb. When you see the garbage going to come in and get your stuff, whatever you sit in there is going to be sitting in that site in Round Lake Park, I'll tell you right now. Okay, we need to limit the public comment at this point so we can get the board back on track for discussion on the agenda. Uh, we will have additional discussion at the committee as a whole. Uh, my recommendation to the board would be... May I make another submission before we go to recommendations? I would like to... Um, I asked Walter to give us just a little bit more information so that everybody understands where the vote um, will be you know, looking from. For Swalco, it will take a quorum present to vote on the agreement. The quorum necessary is 22 members. And then the majority of those, which is 12, to vote in favor of the agreement. <coughs> Just so you understand, we can go in with a no vote, or whatever our vote is going to be. Um, 12 other people will have the majority. Okay, just wanted to make sure if it's got that piece of information. I'm still opposed. To, to, to address something Ms. Uh, Senator Sally said, it's like, you know, like what if we would miss out on the revenue? I mean, just taking around numbers, it's what, 20, 25,000? There's thousands of families in around Lake. I mean, it, I don't think there's any risk of being penny wise and pound foolish in this one. We're talking about big foot. Five ten dollars a family that oh, ooh, we're going to miss out on that. I, all right, I'll go to McDonald's one last time. I mean, it's like I don't think that's a 
you know, I don't think that's a valid reason for anybody to say, well, we might miss out on you know, one of this. Like, all right, we have to pay another five or ten dollars of credit to build over the course of a year. Yeah, times are tough, but I think I can handle it. Back to the board discussion. My recommendation would be, and the majority of our board had voiced opinion that we oppose the facility, that we direct our representative to make a motion at this fall pro meeting to oppose the approval of the 12 pro post agreement at this point due to the fact that the impact on the adjacent municipalities has not been considered. Are we sure we need to have that majority opposition? I just want to make that clarification. Our trustees to voice their reason. I definitely oppose the group. I feel yes, we do need to vote no on the host agreement. But I also think it's very important that everybody here attends the April 3rd meeting at the county to voice their, their concern to them also. And also at the group meeting uh, with Swalco on the 11th. So the other communities that are part of Swalco knows that uh, your concerns and that you need to stop it, period. So two important other dates you need to be at also besides the uh, <coughs> hearing uh, that uh, uh, that. And where's the Swalco meeting again? Swalco meeting is at the village of Haynesville on April 11th and starts at 7 p.m. County board meeting is scheduled for a meeting on April 9th. 9th and on April 9th. There's also another meeting on April 3rd. There are committee meetings, 8.30 in the morning and 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Again, you can be heard on, those, um, on this issue through the county as well. So do you know the location of the committee meetings? Is that the it is on the 10th permit? floor of the county building in Waukegan. Yes, sir. I would also recommend that the village of Round Lake have representation at those meetings to oppose it on our behalf. I would love to be there. I'll be working very hard and I can't stand it. I can show up for the eight of us. Yes. Trustee Newby? 